Hi guys, Drew Cox here with Moltec ATV and Cycles and uh, today I'd like to talk to you guys about uh, some Fox Racing shocks and uh, we're going to be discussing the rear shocks. Uh, it'd be their Street Performance Series for the Harley Davidson models. Um, let me grab the shock here. Um, what we've got here is the Fox Street Performance Series shock um, with rebound adjustability and it has an internal floating piston in it. Um, the sum of the features of this shock are it has preload adjustability and on the preload adjustability you have a numbering system here that will correlate in the um, setup manual that comes with these shocks and uh, it will give you a baseline setting for the type of weight and rider you are and depending on which model of shock you got this particular model is the standard series shock. They also offer a heavy duty uh, shock as well. The heavy duty shock is geared to riders above 200 pounds and the standard shock is 200 pounds and lower. Um, the HD shock is also for riders who do carry a passenger as well. Um, and they offer two different uh, lengths of these shocks. They offer a 12 inch length and they offer a 13 inch length. This is the 13 inch length model. Some guys out there that like to lower those bikes down, um, they offer a 12 inch shock that'll drop the back end of that bike down. But with what I like about the 13 inch model is you get more travel with it. Um, so some of the features of this shock um, are, it's got a rebound adjustability on it. And as stated before, we have preload adjustability. It also has an internal floating piston inside the shock. Um, and what an internal floating piston is, you have your oil and your nitrogen is separated. There's a piston about in here. Your nitrogen's on this side of the piston and your oil's on this side and all your valving is in here. Um, and what that internal floating piston allows, it uh, it's better consistency is what it does. Um, stock shocks, they're emulsion shocks and with heat and uh, riding conditions changing, that shock just is not as consistent. It can fade over time. Um, by separating the oil, Fox has made a more consistent, more reliable shock um, by allowing the temperature change not to affect this uh, nitrogen chamber as much as it would be if it was made. So another cool thing about this shock is it is completely serviceable and rebuildable by a Fox uh, authorized service center or you can do it yourself. You do need some special tools if you're going to do it and they can be costly. But uh, any authorized Fox service center, which we are one, can service this shock and get parts for this shock. And um, inside this shock there is a shim stack style valving system in here. And with the shim stack style valving system, we can actually go in there if you're not happy with the way either the compression side of this shock is working or the rebound side of this shock's working, we can go in and we can change some shims around. We have shims in stock and uh, we can change that. And with our dyno tuning in-house, we can uh, perfect the setup through rider testing and uh, dyno tuning. Um, and we'll get into more of that later, but uh, anyway, this was just a quick overview on the Fox uh, Street, Street Performance Series shocks for the Harley Davidson. And then uh, later on, uh, like I said, we're going to go over to the dyno here and we're going to dyno tune one of these things um, and show you the benefits of this rebound adjuster on here. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll be back with some dyno tuning and then uh, we'll be back with the installation videos. Okay guys, we're gonna um, show you what this uh, shock's gonna dyno at here. Um, let me fire up the dyno and again we're gonna we're gonna test this shock at 2 inches per second and 10 inches per second. And what that's going to show us is at 2 inches per second, that's geared more towards your smaller depressions, your longer depressions, smoother bumps in the road. And then uh, 10 inches per second is going to be your big deep potholes and your cracks in the road with your square edges where that shock's really going to hit that ledge and it's going to want to compress really fast. So go from fully extended to compressed at a really high speed and that's what that 10 inches per second is going to achieve. 
Um, the two inches per second, that's when you're just kind of going over rollers and some small G outs and stuff and the shock's not moving as fast. So we're going to go with two inches per second on that to duplicate that scenario. So let me get this dyno fired up. I've got everything ready to go and um, we will see, uh, see what this thing does. And again, to show you guys the difference on this, um, with the rebound adjustment all the way counterclockwise on this, which is fully opened up, I'm going to represent that with this purple pin that I got installed and then we'll go to full clockwise which will be all the way closed on that rebound port to show you guys the difference in force on that shock between all the way opened on your rebound adjuster and all the way closed okay so this thing should be warmed up now we're we're at two inches per second so I'm gonna go ahead and get my line Okay, and that there, that's, that's the force that's applied when your shock's hitting your bump stop there. So uh, that's what you feel. You will feel that if you ever bottom that shock out, you'll feel that bump stop hit. And what that bump stop does is it allows for no metal to metal contact. You wouldn't want your seal head hitting your bottom eyelet here it would cause catastrophic damage over time. So uh, let's crank this up to 10 inches per second now. And again, we're all the way out on our rebound dampening adjustment. Okay, so here we are, 10 inches per second. Let's get our line there. shut her down and we'll change pins and then I will show you guys after we get done the difference in force in pounds with the rebound adjuster turned fully out as opposed to the rebound adjuster turned fully in Okay, get this rebound adjuster dialed in to fully closed. And when you guys are adjusting these, make sure that on both shocks they are the same adjustment from side to side. You don't want to have one all the way open and one all the way in. They're kind of working against themselves. So make sure that you check your adjustments and there's nice little clicker adjustments on these Fox Performance Series shocks so you can count the number of clicks from fully out or fully in depending on which way you want to do it. So here we go. 10 inches per second. Rebound adjuster fully shut off. Quite a bit of difference there with the green pin. Now let's go down to two inches per second. Okay guys, here I'm going to try to give you a little bit uh, better of a picture of this um, force in inch pounds on this Fox Performance Series shock here that we run on the dyno. It was hard to see um, in the previous footage, so I edited it out and I'm going to try to show it to you here a little better. So on this side here, this is compression. This is rebound on this side over here. So on the compression side, we don't see any change between that green and that uh, that purple purple mark on there. Compression stays the same because um, we don't have a compression adjust 
adjustable damper in this shock uh, we just got rebound so if we go over here to the rebound side uh, purple yeah purple it was the uh, setting where the shock was all the way counterclockwise which that port that rebound port was open on that adjuster all the way and at low speed we've essentially got nothing at two inches per second we're almost zero pounds inch pounds of force at two inches a second and then when you run that shock up to 10 inches per second um our force is uh we're just shy of 25 pounds 25 inch pounds of force at 10 inches per second again with that uh, rebound adjuster all the way open on that shock and then um let's see here we cranked it up uh cranked that rebound adjuster all the way fully closed on that rebound dampening adjustment and uh two inches per second about the same don't really see much change there um about oh you're probably 10 to 15 foot pounds or i'm sorry inch pounds of force at two inches per second but then when you go over here to the 10 inches per second that's where you can see the difference we're about 60 inch pounds of force at 10 inches per second where with that thing um fully open we were at 25 or just under 25 so you've got oh you've got 35 inch pounds worth of adjustment in that thing um, and what that does when your force gets higher over here this green line your force is higher we're up to 60 uh, inch pounds at 10 inches per second so what that does that slows the cycle time of that shock down and the cycle time being from fully compressing to fully extending that's one cycle of the shock so what that does the more force you add to that the slower your shock is going to react it slows it slows the reaction of that spring going back to fully extended and then if you want to speed it up you crank that adjuster out all the way and that'll make the shock rebound faster it'll also give you a really springy ride um, it's all rider preference but again fox has geared this shock to be adjustable to suit many different riders and they also offer two different spring rates on this shock as well um, they got uh, they got the heavy duty and they got the standard series standards geared to guys is about 200 pounds that don't carry uh that don't carry a passenger and um the hd is 200 pound guys or gals um they're heavier that do carry a passenger so they've got that covered as well so anyway thanks for watching as always if you got any questions check us out at www.maltechatv.com or give me a call at 217-371-7197 thanks for watching